Let's have a look at the results from the weekend in the URC. So some of these games I have full videos on on the channel. So if you want more details on the games, you can check those out. I'll point them out as you go through. First game we have is Monster 58 Ospreys 3. So there's a full review of this on the channel if you want to check it out. Monster, um, you know, dominant team all the way through this game, really. Coombs gets himself a hat-trick. Center partnership of Feketeo and Frisk were, went really well. They got a try each as well, but they seem to be clicking. Um, Joey Carby went well at 10 and then at 15 when he had to, to shift there in the second half. He's been called into the Ireland squad as injured cover for Sexton. Um, Zebo also got his first try of the season. It's good to see him back um, scoring tries for Munster. But yeah, very dominant Munster performance there. And that one, as I said, you can check out the video on the channel if you want to more details on that. Also on Friday, we had Glasgow Warriors 17, Ulster 11. So Glasgow opened the scoring in that one. Um, but by halftime, Ulster were winning 8-5, but they couldn't convert uh, that halftime lead into a win. Glasgow in the last 15 minutes scored two tries, and then Cooney for Ulster with a penalty with the clock in the red um, rescues a losing bonus point for them. You know, Ulster would have expected from, you know, even the narrow halftime lead that they would have built on it in the second half and um you know maybe been able to close out the game but they weren't able to do that but this is you know it's a pretty decent warriors side and it's two teams fighting fighting away there at the top of the table next in is the saturday's game so we had the um line seven sharks 29 so this is the first of the south african derbies that happened on saturday there's a full review of this on the channel as well so lines they were kind of competitive in the first half but then second half sharks were able to pull away from them sharks ended up with um four try bonus point win there as well bosch i felt um went really well for them and also we just had kind of the um it was the uh, chituka brothers yeah one was playing on either side and actually um the younger of the brothers he got himself yellow carded um in an incident with his elder brother and i think the two of them had a bit of a smile over that uh, when he was going off off the field but yeah that it was um Pretty interesting game there. Didn't seem to be too many people there at the game, um, which is kind of in contrast with the other South African derby. So I don't know what was going on on there with that one. But still, um, you know, a decent game to watch all the same. And again, full review if you want to check it out on the channel. Next, then we have the other of the South African derbies that happened on Saturday. It was the Bulls 19, Stormers 23. So the Bulls were actually on top for a lot of the game, but the problem I felt they had was they were trying to just steamroller over the Stormers. And, you know, to an extent, it worked in terms of getting them um, some go forward. But once it got into the 22, they found, they found out they're going kind of hard. Um, they only got one try through Nkosi and Stormers just had that little edge on them. They, you know, they, they had a bit more about them in terms of be, not only their, their backs, but the forwards as well, being able to go for gaps rather than just for the, you know, the big collisions. And that kind of told in the end, um, for them. I was actually um, very clever as well for Le Boc, who took a drop goal with um, about less than 10 minutes to go. He gets a drop goal, and then the Bulls come back up the other end of the pitch, and instead of them being able to just go for a penalty to win the game, they had to try for um, the try, and they couldn't They couldn't get there. If, if it had been 
because uh, they did have penalties there where they were going to the corner. If if it had been like just a um, two point game, or sorry, a one point game the way it was before the drop goal, then they might have actually pulled out the win. So you know, uh, clever from Leboc there to make sure that they had. Um, that little cushion going into the last few minutes. Again, full review of this on the channel if you want to check it out. Then we have um, Zebra 34, Connacht 57. Sounds like a bit of a blowout, but um, like Connacht race into a lead. Tierney Martin scores a hat trick um, by the 26th minute, I think, um, to get Connacht, you know. Um, Fairly, fairly well settled in the game. They then scored two more tries before half time, so bonus point wrapped up. Uh, then Jesse scores one for Palmer before half time as well. But it looks like Connacht are going to run away with this. Then um, in the third quarter, Zebra score um, three tries of their own, so they end up with the fourth try. Um, so they get the, the four try bonus point out of that, but they also bring it back to a four point game, 34 38. But then in the last kind of 10 minutes or so, Connacht um, tag on another um, three tries to then pull away in the end. But yeah, like Connacht really um, made it a little bit difficult for themselves by allowing Zebra back into the game so much. Uh, but still, um, a fairly exciting game there. And, you know, Zebra, I've said it before that if, if they can just string, um, you know, those periods that they have where they do look good, if they can string it out for 80 minutes, they will get a win. Uh, but they're running out of games uh, this season to be able to do that. Next time we have Scarlet's 42, Edinburgh 14. This is another one where there's a full review on the channel. So um, go check that out if you like. Um, Scarlet's I felt were really good in this one. Um, Comber um, scored in the first five minutes to get two tries um, in the first like 11 minutes. We got Fafida there um, as well with, with the second one there. Comber got himself a second. Fafida should have got himself a second one in the second half. But um, he gets put through. He has a like you know run from about halfway um, in the post on a pose. But then he turns around and passes the ball back to Davies, who then dots the ball down. So kind of strange seeing that. It's the kind of thing maybe you see in sevens, but not really in um, you know the fifteen man game. Um, but yeah, Scarlet's kind of just pulled away in the second half. Edinburgh. Um, Lots of mistakes from them really kind of made it hard for them to get any kind of momentum in the game. And, you know, Scarlet's just took their chances a lot better than them, but also um, they created a lot more than Edinburgh did as well. Um, so, yeah, they're and a team on the up, really, and Edinburgh kind of dropping away from, you know, where they were earlier on in the season, where they were up above. Glasgow and they were kind of the top Scottish team. Then we have um, Cardiff 30, Benetton 13. So Cardiff score two tries uh, from Lane, both actually in the first six minutes, but Benetton also score one of the third minutes. So, you know, if you were a bit late to your seat <laughs> in that one, like maybe getting a point or something, you might have missed uh, three tries. Uh, then Kind of calms down a bit, but Benetton do get a second try before half time. So pretty close um, at half time. Penalties keeping um, Cardiff ahead. Then in the second half, then um, Cardiff pull away. There was a late uh, red card for um, Albernos. I didn't see what happened to that one. Um, but um, but then, like, the game game was done and dusted anyway. Um, Cardiff had, had already, like, um, gotten a decent cushion. But they do, after that, though, they do get their fourth try for the bonus point um, there as well. So a decent win for Cardiff. Benetton, again, you know, they're, they're competitive at home, but they do struggle 
um, on the travels at the moment. I guess that's going to be the next kind of evolution uh, and step that they take is to get to the point where they can give um, other teams in and around them in, in the table a game away from home as well. Finally, then we have Leinster 43, Dragons 14. So there's a full review of this one on the channel as well, if you want to check that out. So Leinster opened the scoring early, which um, they've done a lot of games this year. Harry Byrne going over after three minutes, after like a lot of pressure from the forwards, then they spread out and he goes over. Um, then like in the end, you know, uh, Leinster, stretched away, scored seven tries altogether, so an easy bonus point win for them. But Dragons actually put it up to them for maybe the first um, 30 minutes or so. And then in that period, just before halftime, five-minute period, Leinster scored two tries. And suddenly, instead of it being a seven-point game, it's, uh, I think it was 26 to seven at halftime. Like, so completely changes the complexion of the game just with those uh, two tries there. And then second half then, they just kind of stretch further away. See a lot of young players uh, coming, you know, um, good for Leinster as well. The likes of Harry Byrne there, um, Russell as well, got in on the try scoring and Tector as well. Um, but then like the, you know, the back row that they played there, and substitute as well. So you talk about Reese Ruddock, Scott Penny. Um, who else is there? Then uh, Will Connors come on, and oh, oh, Max Deegan. Max Deegan was playing at eight. So like that's like that's a very decent like those four very decent back row unit. You know, including the guy on the bench um, to 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 have and in a team normally like you know but this this is Leinster without their players have been pulled up the likes uh called up sorry for the six nations the likes of um doris van der fleer um, and conan in the ireland squad so you know it's it's still a very handy back row to have there but yeah like Leinster now um they're, they're you're wondering at this stage are they going to lose a game in the regular season at this point because we're running out of rounds. Um, but we're going to have a a look now at the table to see you know where those teams are um, after round fourteen. So you know th there's there, there are only like four more rounds to go. We got Leinster at the top there, fourteen from fourteen, sixty six points gap down to Stormers in second place is twelve points. So. You know, Leinster are closing in on the point where um, they they will they will have secured top spot, top seeding um, in the next couple of rounds if they keep on winning. The Stormers, um, you know, it was very close there. They they obviously hunted Ulster down and overtook them, but now they're pulling out a gap there as well, ten points back down to Ulster, and now um, there's just so close from there down. So you've got Ulster in third and 44. Glasgow, who beat them um, up to fourth on 43. Munster with um, that really big win at the weekend, up to fifth on 42. The Bulls, um, you know, the, um, they lost against the Stormers, and they're kind of the big losers from the weekend as well, dropping out of the top four. Um, down to sixth place with 41. You got the Sharks there, then who beat the Lions. They are in seventh. And then Connacht with that win in Zebra, they climb up to eighth and the final um, spot there for the knockout stages, but not the final spot for the um, Heineken Cup qualification for next year because that is ninth place Cardiff who are winning the Welsh um, Shield. Uh, so they're on 34. Benetton also on 34 and 10th place. Edinburgh really have like sunk um, away from the heady heights that they were the earlier part of the season. They're down 11 and 31 points. Ospreys closing in on them um, down in 12th and 29 points. Scarlets there um, in 13th with 27. Lions of 14th with 24. And then we have the Dragons down in 15th 
18 and then Zebra uh, propping up the table as they've done for pretty much the whole season down to 16th with um, eight points. So you can see that, um, you know, from third place Ulster on 44 points down to Benetton in 10th place on 34, there's only 10 points between those teams. And I talked about um, in the preview for the round 14 that it it could be one of the biggest rounds of the um, season simply because teams can pick up points there. Um, that means that they, you know, they're where they want to be when we come to the last round of the um, competition and they're not looking for other results to go their way. So teams that have won this weekend, the likes of Glasgow, um, Munster, Sharks, Connacht, have a little bit of an edge on the other teams around them now because potentially they might go into the final round then knowing that their fate is in their own hands, whereas other teams, um, you know, would probably have to rely on um, results going their way. But we still do have four more rounds to go. But, yeah, it really is hotting up in terms of who's going to make the knockout stages. Like, you know, you got Connacht there in eighth place, but you still have, like, Cardiff, Benetton, Edinburgh, even Ospreys and Scarlets with a late run. Um, could um, you know throw the hat in the ring for that as well? So really getting towards the sharp end of the season. We're on another break though now. Like we've got uh, you know the um, middle weekend of the Six Nations this weekend, um, and then we're back again. Um, we've also got actually some some games this weekend, right? Because they are the rearranged games. So um, those are, let me just pull them up here. Um, I think it's Ulster and who, Ulster against the Lions is one. Um, And let me just find where the other one is. So, where's the next one? Sorry, bear with me a second. Yeah, so, sorry, it's Sharks versus Ulcers and Lions versus Glasgow are the the two that are rearranged from earlier on in in the season. Um, So, you know, there are four teams there, all with a chance really to... um, make a bit of progress as well and we look at it like sharks ulster and glasgow all there in the top eight so that's going to have a big effect on um you know the positions there too but as i said um i will um you know cover the results of those games while we're covering the six nations this weekend um, so look out for previews coming out probably on, uh, it's probably going to be Friday because I have to wait for teams to come out. Um, so probably Friday, look out for those and hope to see you guys on one of those videos.